Today I'm going to show you how to make roti. What is roti and why does it bring to mind happy visions? Roti is the flatbread of South Asia and no household is complete without one. Roti is also known as chapati or pulka. Hello, I'm Masala Mama. Don't forget to like and share our video and subscribe to our channel. Jello, let's go! I make my dough in my KitchenAid mixing bowl using this dough hook. It's curved to maximize rolling the dough into a smooth ball. You can also knead the dough with your hands instead. For this dough, you will need three cups roti flour, also called atta, half a teaspoon salt, one teaspoon vegetable oil, and enough water to make a smooth dough. This can be anywhere between one to two cups, depending on various factors like the humidity, temperature, etc. Just keep two cups on hand and adjust as you go along. In your mixing bowl, add two cups of the flour, all of the salt, and oil. Lower the hook attachment, lock it, and start on low speed mixing these ingredients. Start by adding one cup of water, then add gradually more as you need it. Add the other one cup of flour and continue kneading. You can increase the speed if the moving hook has slowed down the kneading. Add water a little bit at a time until the dough comes together. At this point, stop the kneading and check on your dough. It should be soft but not too sticky and continue kneading. Use a spoon to sprinkle water now until your dough is smooth and the sides of the bowl come out clean. If you're going to use this dough later in the day, simply place it in any container with a lid to avoid crusting at the top and then refrigerate. If you're making rotis right away, then lightly oil a bowl and place your dough there. Please do let the dough rest 15 minutes before making your rotis. Break off a handful of dough like this and dip it in some dry all-purpose flour. Start by taking sides of the dough and moving them inward then smoothing it out. I've made millions, but no, thousands of rotis and I can tell you practice makes perfect. Pinch the bottom and there you have a beta, which is really the dough ball. Press down gently on the beta and dip it in the flour on both sides. Start by firmly moving the beta in a circle between the fingertips and thumbs, like this. Then place it on the counter or a rolling board to begin rolling. Sprinkle the flour while rolling if the dough is sticking to the rolling pin. It's an art, my friend. Roll it thin like a tortilla. Now heat a non-stick flat pan, like this crepe pan, on medium heat. You'll know it's ready when water sizzles as it hits the pan. Place your roti on the pan. Once the roti is easy to lift off, go ahead and flip to the other side. Keep lifting and checking the roti to see the brown spots of cooked dough. Then, using this rolled up tea towel, press down on the roti and move it around. The purpose of this is to leave no spot of raw dough on the roti. By the way, a roti that fills up with hot air like this is known as the perfect roti. What a beautiful thing to watch. Flip the roti. This is full of hot steam, so be careful not to press down on it too hard. The steam can burn. Been there, done that. This fluffed up shape is also known as pulka, a light and fluffy roti. Press down gently to release the steam to avoid accidental burning. The roti is done when both sides have evenly placed brown spots and no raw dough can be seen. Lift your roti and place on a tea towel to absorb any moisture released from the steam. In between rotis, make sure to wipe off any excess flour left behind on the pan. Here's another way to cook roti. When you flip your roti the first time, remove the pan from the stove and place a wire stand like this over the burner and use metal tongs to move the roti over it. Move it around making sure all sides are cooked. 
Looks pretty, I think. Then flip and do the same to the other side until it's done. You can lightly butter the tops of the rotis to keep them soft and give them a buttery flavor. Use as much or as little as you like. And now, because a fresh off the pan roti should be eaten right away, I will go ahead and do that. It's thin and light, ready to eat with any meat or vegetable dish. Try it with the mixed dal tarka I made in one of my earlier videos. You can keep your roti soft for up to a day by keeping them in an airtight container, or like me, I keep them in a Ziploc bag. The smell of rotis cooking will bring everyone in the kitchen. Now's the time to ask family members to clean up after you. We hope you enjoyed this video on how to make roti. Please post any comments or questions in the comment box below. We do read them. Don't forget to check out my other videos. See you soon with another Masala Mama video. Until then, Masala Mama out.